Well, welcome and thanks everybody for joining today and what seems to be a very global audience from what I can see to be from the attendee list. And as head of customer success at Ampliance, I'm especially pleased to see some of our customers join on the line also. It's a great pleasure to be able to host this webinar with Pete, Pippa and Alistair. Many of you know Sweaty Betty, but for those who don't, <coughs> behind not only a great name, is a brand at the forefront of innovative activewear and evangelize a very positive message for fitness and well-being. So next slide, please, Maddie. Great. <clears throat> so for myself personally and the Ampliance team, we've had the pleasure of working with Sweaty Betty for over eight years now. And it's safe to say the landscape has evolved hugely in a relatively short time. We've gone from designing for desktop and a really rather brief uh, period where tablets rule the world <laughs> to a mobile technology uh, quickly caught up and mobiles became the go-to device outside and inside the home. And obviously this had a dramatic effect on the way retailers interact with the customers. And this webinar, you know, gave us a great time to reflect on how we've partnered together to navigate these changes. But the one consistent theme throughout the change was marrying content and commerce together in order to deliver a great customer experience. Next, please, Maddie. So let's go back to 2012, where we worked with Sweaty Betty, uh, and then we had a flash-based content management system. And this was hugely innovative and allowing e-commerce and marketing teams to author content and create shoppable experiences. I think some of the line, some of our customers on the line maybe also use interactive merchandising. Um, and whilst we're thinking about mobile, it's very much a mobile and desktop approach. And then mobile technology and mobile networks matured and shoppers' browsing habits changed and more choice was introduced and they could easily access multiple websites in minutes whenever they wanted. We wanted to start thinking about how we can enhance the products and how they appeared on the website. And they could close uh, so they can closely mimic the high fidelity in-store experience while maintaining light, lightning quick load times. With Sweaty Betty continue their growth, they invested in necessary changes to move to Salesforce in the very, very capable hands of Trizons. This gave them the platform to scale their digital footprint and open new opportunities to provide seamless experience no matter how they shopped. For our relationship, it meant that we could take it to the next level. Next, please, Maddie. So at this point, there was an increase in demand for content with more transactions happening online and the brand were uh, expanding globally. However, this put a, st a strain on the content team, which is Pippa, Alistair and uh, Pete there as well. At the time, everything was uh, being coded in Salesforce and the development resource, Alistair, was stretched to say the least, meaning there was a limit, on, there was a limit to what they could be achieved. We spent a good amount of time breaking down the content strategy and understanding what's needed to give Sweaty Betty the freedom to do more. This meant passing the creation of content and a management experience to the business users, allowing the development team, Alistair, to focus on creating a vast library of reusable components. Next, please, Maddie. Uh, no, go back, back one. Thank you. Ultimately, the goal was to increase productivity and agility with the same amount of people allowing them more time to focus on problem solving and new opportunities to enhance the customer experience. I'll let the Sweaty Betty team take you through their finer details. What this meant for the content team was they're now in a good position to react quickly to the changing demands and feel confident that they can manage a whole new set of challenges that come with a mobile everything world. Next one, please, Maddie. So um, for those who are interested, this is how we're set up from an architecture point of view. All the assets are held in the central repository, uh, which then supports the collaboration and workflow into content and product management. From upload to live, all the, all the workflows to group product media and optimize the devices are completely automated. And the creation of content and the manage management and the experience is all within Ampliance. This is then nicely integrated with Salesforce via webhooks between the Salesforce Open Commerce and Ampliance APIs to assign and schedule all the content. As Ampliance is a headless platform, this content can be reused in other channels such as emails, install applications, above and beyond into the internet of things. If Google Glass ever made a comeback, we're ready. Fingers crossed it doesn't. And we also prepared for when we all become constantly connected cyborgs in about five years time, I suspect. 
Next, please, Maddie. But coming back to the present, this is all working very well. And our friends at Trizons have kindly provided us with a slide which outlines some of the benefits that Sweaty Betty have seen. I'll let you take that in. <laughs> um, but that's it for now. And without further ado, I'll let the Sweaty Betty team take over. And let's cue a slightly awkward handover. Over to you, Pete. Thanks, Troy. I will just um, switch to my screen. Uh, there we go. Cool. Can everyone see that all right? We're in, Pete. Looking good. Brilliant. So, hi, guys. Thanks for joining today. So, as Troy was mentioning, um, we're going to take you through how we at Sweaty Betty create immersive customer first online experiences um, with the help of dynamic content. Um, so, first of all, just for those who aren't, who may be not um, as familiar with Sweaty Betty and what we do, um, Pippa is going to, actually, we'll do some introductions first. That's what we're going to do. Um, so my name is Pete Exley. Um, I'm content manager here with Sweaty Betty. Um, I come from a background in copywriting and accessibility roles. Um, and I've worked in content now for about, tw uh, for about five years since 2015. Um, and I've been at Sweaty Betty now for a year and a half. Hello, I'm Pippa and I'm the content coordinator. I've been at Sweaty Betty for five years, so I'm the longest standing member of the content team. Um, I actually started off in customer care. I was there for two years and then I was given the opportunity to move over to the e-commerce team as an e-commerce assistant and I've been there ever since. Hi, I'm Alistair and I am the front end developer. Um, so I've been with Sweaty Betty for three years now. Um, I started in the creative team and gradually I've moved my way over to e-commerce. They, they poached me. Um, and before I was with uh, Sweaty Betty, I was at Jigsaw. That's me. Back to you, Pete. Um, so yes, as I was saying just now, um, for those who aren't familiar with what Sweaty Betty are or what we do, um, Pippa is going to give us a brief history of the Sweaty Betty journey so far. Thanks, Pete. Um, so for those of you that don't know, I'm sure most of you will, um, we are a 22 year old activewear brand. Um, we were born in Notting Hill in 1998. And we were founded by Tamara and Simon Hill Norton. And Tamara's dream was to create a clothing brand um, to make women feel powerful and beautiful in their activewear because there wasn't a lot at the time um, for women on the market. Um, as a company, our mantra is to empower women through um, fitness and beyond, and all of our product is designed by women for women. So over the years, we have achieved a number of accolades as a business. Um, most recently, last year, we won um, Fashion Retailer of the Year and Best Marketing Campaign um, at the Draper's Fashion Awards, which was super exciting for us. Um, we are pretty established in the UK, mostly known in the London areas, but we're dotted all over the UK. And as well as um, here, we, we did have stores in the US. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we have to close our 12 brick and mortar stores, but we still remain in the US in over 50 Nordstrom's um, across the US and Canada. Um, also, most recently, we've opened three stores in Hong Kong. So despite the pandemic, we're still really keen to expand internationally um, and having replatformed in 2018 with Salesforce, we then onboarded um, with Ampliance Dynamic Content in 2019. But as Troy mentioned, we have had um, a, a eight year long relationship with Ampliance. So it's been good to have them all the way through um, our replatform process. Um, and as a brand, we continue to grow with our online demand and we will continue to expand our international sites and along with our own website we launched on John Lewis's website this year and later on um, opened in six of their flagship stores and we will also be looking to uh, move on to a number of other online marketplaces so really exciting times ahead. Thanks Pete. Cool so to begin with I'll give you a bit of background on what do at Sweaty Betty in terms of our online content. 
uh, what, a bit about behind the strategy of what we want to do and what we want to try and achieve um, through our online content using dynamic content. So as a bit of an introduction, um, we've kind of got five main areas of our site that we look after and that dynamic content touches. So firstly, we've got the homepage. Um, this is, I always like to think of and call it a kind of our shop window to the site. Um, a lot of traffic goes through here. So we tend to see around 40% of our uh, purchase journeys touch the homepage in the UK um, and around 20% for the US. So it is a quite a large number, a large proportion of traffic. So a lot of attention is spent on the homepage as you would, as you would imagine. And this is where we kind of try to take over with campaigns, um, with hero products, and really sort of set the scene for the, for the aesthetic of whatever campaign that might be, or the brand in general. Then we come to our PLPs. So these are our category product lists. Um, these tend to mirror what we have in our navigation. So uh, things like leggings and tops and et cetera, as you would expect. But these are also used for um, destinations for various different edits that we might have and destinations for a lot of our marketing activity to link to um, with their specific campaigns. And then thirdly, we have our community area of the site. So this is where most of our sort of alternative content is hosted. Um, so this could be our workout videos. Um, this could be our blog. So more of our longer form content, our podcasts, um, that type of thing. Um, and really the sort of the extras that our customers want from the brand. Then we have um, our inspiration and educational pages. Um, so these, again, these are more of our longer form content pages and these are really sort of hubs for campaigns um, and collaborations. So this one pictured here in the slide is our collaboration with Fern Cotton, which was earlier this year, um, just before lockdown actually, which seems a long time ago. Um, but yeah, as I said, these are our longer form content pieces and really try to tell the story behind our campaigns and our products. And then finally, we have our hygiene pages, as we refer to them as. So this is more the informational content. So this is our delivery returns information, our terms and conditions, um, that kind of thing. And these are really the, the main five areas that dynamic content helps us with. Obviously, there are other, other a lot of other places on the website that we look after and content is on but as you can see this uh, there's a large proportion of our site is touched by dynamic content and that's really transformed the way we work and um, update our site so what do we do as our as the online content team for sweaty betty so as Pippa was mentioning um sweaty betty really began as a retail only um business back in 1998 so stores only um, and we have become synonymous with our customer service and our brand experience when, when customers go into the store. It's a really boutique experience and a really personalized experience. Um, and we know that the, that experience is what customers buy into. They don't just buy the products. Obviously, the products are of super high quality and they love them. But it's also the extras that go along with that. So we often host things called uh, Wellness Wednesdays. So people from the fitness industry and the well-being industry come and talk to our customers in the stores. We have um, workout classes in the stores. So, re so what we try to do online is really try and bring that immersive brand experience into our online journeys as well, as well as giving them that smooth purchase journey throughout the site as well. So pre ampliance um, we kind of, as a, fashion retail, as a fashion retailer, we work within campaigns. So we would look usually at around two campaigns per quarter. And this would mean a kind of site takeover. So we really want to transform the aesthetic of the site to whatever campaign that might be. Um, and then we would create destination pages. So here you see uh, the left hand screenshot is um, a screenshot of our holiday campaign from summer 2009, uh, 2019, sorry. Um, and then obviously we have the category listing pages, as I said, as well, updated with all of our new product products. Um, pre ampliance uh, we kind of almost gave customers two separate journeys. So as you can see from the diagram, customers would enter the site and they would either land on um, the inspiration page or straight on the PLP page or, and that's coming from, it could be marketing activity, they could land 
directly on those pages or they could come through the home page or any other site media that we might have live currently and then they would flow through that so like i said there's almost two separate journeys so one going through the inspiration page through the category through to the pdp perhaps and then to purchase and then one of the other ones kind of um bunny hops over those inspiration pages straight directly to the category product pages and through to the purchase at the end um as i was mentioning our customers are looking they really invest in the brand and they really want to be investing in that story behind our products and our campaigns so that's why we we included these um destination inspirational pages these would be beautifully curated pages with our amazing imagery and really trying to immerse the customer in that and give them a sense of being in that campaign themselves and really inspire them to what they want to buy um so uh, where did I get to? Sorry. Um, so we we knew though that customers also want that streamlined journey. So this is something we tested. Um, we wanted to find out whether customers would like would prefer that really streamlined journey and just are interested in getting the products and going, or if they really want that um, that extra information and extra content around their purchase before they buy. So we tested. So we tested landing customers on the inspiration page or the PLP page. Um, so one way was cutting out that extra step. Um, and we found out that um, customers actually converted a lot more by landing directly on the PLP page, which I think you could probably you would probably expect that because you're getting to the purchase quicker and you're finding what you want quicker. But we know through our various other channels, so email and social and talking to customers in stores that there really is an appetite for that extra content. So we knew that the inspiration and education behind our stories and behind our campaign was important to our customers. And we wanted to, we wanted to try and find a way of serving those stories as well as giving them the smoothest possible journey as we could. And that is where um, dynamic content came in. So as I mentioned, um, our landing pages tended to be tended to be quite elaborate. Um, they took quite a lot of development work from Alistair to build. Um, and so we wanted to try and find a way of interspersing and threading through that quicker, seamless journey, um, threading through some of the extra content that we had. And this is where, and this is where we got to. So this is an example of our swimwear category. Um, really bringing in some of that extra content that we um, surfaced on our landing pages um, through the product list. So we've got links out to our blogs, so how to help save the ocean. We've got information on, a lot of our swimwear is made from recycled fabrics and we know customers are very invested in, our, in the sustainability aspects of our products. So some information there and also some of the USPs of our products as well. So right at the bottom there, you see um, some chlorine resistant labels, um, telling customers a bit more about our products and kind of giving them a bit more of a guided shopping journey. And this is what we're trying to do further. Dynamic content allows us to do this. Um, as I said, the landing pages would take sort of weeks almost to create, um, but with dynamic content, this kind of thing on the PLP that you see, um, could be it could be turned around in hours almost so it really has transformed how we surface the content that we know customers want um so now i'm going to sh hand over to alistair and he is going to take us through some of the processes and workflows that um were in place uh pre dynamic content thanks pete Hi, so yeah, workflows pre ampliance um, So initially, any content area of the site, so in Salesforce, um, these included content slots and content assets, basically anywhere where you could input HTML, CSS and JavaScript would be coded by myself. Um, so as you can see from the slide here, um, this could be the entire home page, you've got the landing pages, various feature pages, uh, PLP banners, uh, basket banners, uh, and then all the hygiene pages, as uh, Pete was mentioning earlier, so the delivery and returns and terms and conditions. 
So because of all this, large amounts of my time uh, was spent on the smallest BAU tasks. Um, and it also left little time to spend on larger, more forward thinking, more exciting, more complex uh, feature pages and things like that. And it also left uh, minimal development time really to help optimize the site um, and to spend looking into new and better functionalities. Um, now, as the process of updating content was uh, very manual, um, we were literally running at max capacity uh, most of the time, to be honest. So the range of our workload was also quite limited. Um, so we simply just didn't have the time to do everything that we wanted to do. Um, so in order to keep up with the pace of the requests and all the, the things coming in that they wanted us to do, Pippa would kindly help out. So she would uh, go into uh, some of the templates I've created. She would copy and paste them across the site, manipulate them, add bits, remove bits, hide bits, um, you name it, Pippa would do, which was absolutely wonderful. Now, um, although this was great, sometimes this process was open to errors um, as code could be duplicated um, and sometimes elements could be accidentally deleted. Um, and with code, uh, even the smallest of characters, if you delete uh, a little full stop here and there, it could break the whole template, which is, which is not good. So, so this process all in all was um, far from ideal. Um, now, aside from this, um, there was a large cohort of designers, graphic designers, uh, as well as freelancers. And because of this, there became a lack of consistency, really, between the different con content areas of the site. And what this meant was that uh, most content had to be created from scratch, uh, rather than reusing existing templates and content from other areas of the site. Now, I'd like to focus on a couple of areas of the site um, to go into more detail and really to show you what life was like before Ambience and what it's like now. So Pete, if you'd like to move to the next slide, please. Great, so I'm gonna start with blogs. So initially I created a generic template for the blog page with everything you could possibly imagine you'd want on a blog page, having liaised with Pippa and the team. Um, as you can see there on the left, there is an example of uh, an initial template I created of a simple blog. Um, so you've got an image there, you've got titles, you've got a subtitle, smaller copy and some list items there. So that was the, the blog page. Then as well as that, I also created a generic template for all the blog landing pages. Now of which there are seven of these. Um, and these are essentially uh, a grid with lots of tiles, each of which representing one of the blogs. And these were the areas that, tend, uh, that customers tend to come to first before selecting a blog to go and look at. Um, on the right there, you can see an example of a landing page and you can see all the little tiles there all stacked up. And if you look on the far right, you can see a huge list of code and the same on the blog page. So there's a lot, a lot of code, you know, thousands of lines of code there. So there's a lot that could go wrong <laughs> when you're copying and pasting and doing stuff. So, so basically, so that's what I did. I created the initial templates. Then I handed over to Pippa and she was in charge basically of creating all the blogs and updating all the landing pages. So a big task. Um, now, specifically on the blog page, Pippa would go in to the HTML directly, copy and paste elements and build it bit by bit until she got it to look like what she wanted it to. Um, and then with a the landing page, she would create a tile and add that tile to each of the landing pages she wanted it to be on. Now, initially, you literally had to move all the tiles down manually and then add the new tile at the top. And of course, this was a bit of a palaver um, and very time consuming, uh, quite manual and really prone to errors and duplicated code, which is not what you wanted. So um, all in all, the time to complete a blog, say would be anywhere between one to two hours per blog plus uh, time needed to update all the landing pages. So now, Pete, if you'd like to go to the next slide, please. Here we are with Ampliance. 
So on the left there, there is Amphluence itself. Uh, we've got the, the main content type, uh, which is the blog page. Now within that blog page, there are two further uh, content types that make up the blog. So these include image and copy. So it's really simple. There's only two content types you can choose from. And with that, you can uh, make an entire blog. So if you look on the right, there is that blog live on the website. So you've got an image and you've got various levels of copy, uh, titles, lists, links, and all that kind of stuff. At the bottom, you've got the related stories area. Now this in Amplins is a further area when you scroll down, you can add the blog tiles that are also the same ones that you add to the blog landing pages. So you can literally add any blog you like there, uh, depending on what is related to that blog. So that is the blog page. Now, if we move to the next slide, please, Pete. Here are the landing pages. So with the main landing page content type, you only have to add one uh, content type, and that is the tile. So it's really simple. So you create the type, type, uh, tile. That includes an image, a category, title, and then a CTA with the link. Uh, and then once you've done that, you literally add it to each of the landing pages that you want and you can move it around, you can drag it around, it's really simple. And then once you've done that, you hit publish, it's a content asset, it then goes straight through to Salesforce and then on the right, you can see uh, that landing page live on the site. Now when you want to change something, if you want to move some of the blogs down and move some others up, that's really simple to do, you can just do that, hit publish and there it is and all of that without going near any of the HTML and, and all that. So it's fabulous, love it. Um, now, uh, Pete, if you'd like to move to the next slide, please. So now I'm gonna move on to the navigation. So the navigation and more specifically the desktop navigation. So we did this quite early on in our Ampliance journey uh, because it really was a bit of a, um, you know, a pain in terms of updating. There's so much going on, so much could go wrong. Um, and it's a very important area of the site. So, so again with this, I created the various templates um, and on the left there, you can see some of my original code, that is the new in navigation and you've got various titles, you've got uh, some category links there uh, and it's all listed there, quite a lot of code again. Um, and once I'd created those initial templates, again, I would hand over to the content teams, various people in the content teams, and also the trade team. So everyone would literally be going in and out of those areas and updating the code, uh, copying and pasting, duplicating, hiding things, um, and, and so on and so forth. Now, this wasn't necessarily a time consuming task. However, uh, the HTML became very messy. Uh, duplicated code, errors if code was deleted accidentally. Um, it was very manual, very fiddly, and very confusing really. Because now, if you look on the right there, <laughs> that is the same code potentially a few weeks later that I might go in and have a look, and, and that's the same thing. So, you've got in the light blue code there that's hidden, and you've it's just all a bit wonky, it's not very easy to read, and it's really quite likely that errors could happen with that. So occasionally I would go in and tidy it up, but, but it's just not an easy thing. So Pete, if you'd like to move to the next slide, please. Here came Ampliance. So this one is the new arrivals navigation as an example. So on the left there, there is the, the main content type in the navigation. And within that, you have three options, three further content types that you can combine to create any number of formats of the navigation. You can see those in the purple there. So you've got a title, you've got a list item, and you've got an image. Now, um, I divided the navigation up into six columns. So in this example, you can see there are five columns. On the left, you have a title, with various list items underneath. And then you've got the navigation image. Um, with, within that content type, you can further add additional copy with, underneath it. You can change the color. You can also change the images to GIFs. So if you want um, moving content, for example. So that is really easy and simple to do. So you do it all in those content types. 
And then once you're ready, you just hit publish and that goes live into the navigation in Salesforce. So that is that example. Now, Pete, if you'd like to move to the last slide there. There we go. So here are some further examples now live in the web on our website. So in the green, there is that new arrivals navigation for you to see. In the orange, we've got our workouts and well-beings uh, navigation, which is a series of images and copy below. And then a further example below in the purple, which is our shop navigation, which has more category links and filters and things like that with just one image. So there really are quite a few things you can do all within that one content type with those further sub content types. So there we go, the end of my area of this webinar. So I'd like to hand over to Pippa. Okay, so I'm gonna cover workflows post Ampliance. So I think we can all safely say that Ampliance dynamic content has changed our lives. It's really rocked our world. And uh, being in the content team for three years, I remember working on the old Ampliance. And when I say old, it was old. I, I actually just can't believe how far the functionality has come in the last three years. It's crazy. Um, so just on this slide are a number of things that we have found that's really changed since um, using dynamic content. And I think the main one for us is speed. Um, we're able to be so much more, um, we can be more reactional as a team and um, really action what the business needs us to do. Um, we don't have to wait for, um, for Alistair to be building things in HTML anymore. We have so much more capability and less restrictions. Um, so Pete, if you go on to the next slide. Um, this is just a visual representation of the time frame it would have taken us to build something like a content page. So the first bar is like two weeks. Uh, we'd get a request, I'd send a brief off to the design team and then they'd come back to Alistair with the assets that he needed to build the page. That could take anything up from five working days or more. And then we'd need to go, go through a sign off period and there usually would be amends. And because it was all HTML, the amends would take longer to fix because it was quite fiddly and you had to style for all devices. Um, and then we could get it live, but it was just such a long process. Um, and you can see in the second bar, that is what, dynamic content has allowed us to do it's allowed us to literally half that time frame and that's maximum like we can turn things around as pete mentioned earlier within hours or or a day um and especially throughout lockdown i don't think we 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 realized how much we needed something like dynamic content but i don't think we really realized how much we needed dynamic content until lockdown because we've never done so many promotions edits, multi-buys, you know, changing of imagery. It's just, it was what we thought was going to be a catastrophic few months for the business. It just turned out to be quite the opposite. Um, so it's been really quite a positive thing for us to have. And I honestly cannot imagine what it would have been like without it. Um, Pete, if you go to the next slide. So as Alistair was um, talking about earlier, what enables us to work so quickly is all these amazing templates he's created for us. So these are all the content types. Well, not all of them because we have millions. Um, these are the content types we can use in our assets to build pages. Um, we can use them throughout the site in different areas. We can use the same content types. Um, Pete and I would often be, you know, dreaming about what we'd want on the website and we'd be doodling on a piece of paper and we'd present it to Alistair and be like, please, Alistair, can you build this for us? And he'd, you know, roll his eyes and look at us like, oh God, another request, a crazy request. Um, but 10 times out of 10, Alistair could build anything that we wanted. So we've got quite an array of content types and I'm sure we win the prize for the most templates of any Ampliance customer. Um, so this has meant that I don't have to wait for him to fix any of the HTML that I used to break. 
because I wasn't a developer. I just, you know, understood minimal parts. I, I only knew what I had to change and I didn't really understand a lot of it. Um, but now we have a dynamic content. I can build whole pages without it causing a mess. Um, so it's a real treat to have all of this available to us. We go to the next slide. So this is just an example. Um, Alice has shown you a few, but this is something that I would build. Um, this is an uh, influencer page that I build for the marketing guys. And these are usually have to turn, I have to turn around really quick because um, they just, they don't have, um, well, they spring these upon me, let's, let's say. Um, so they work with various influencers, they send them outfits and um, we create pages so that their, their followers can shop their looks. Um, so this specific page, if you can, you can see on the, um, on the right what the page actually looks like, um, the top part in, uh, highlighted in orange, that's actually still HTML. I use this example because I wanted to show that you can still use parts of HTML if you need to um, amongst um, Ampliance content. So in this case, that's what, we, what we've had to do. Um, so on the, on the left hand side, you can see I've inputted a load of content types. I've got just generic um, titles, I've got small copy, and um, on, on the right highlighted in blue, um, in the blue squares, they are our outfit builders and that is a Salesforce functionality. And what Alistair was able to do, which what we could not do before, was integrate this functionality into an Ampliance template. So if we go to the next slide, Pete, I'll basically just um, go through how this briefly works. So any page that I need to create on the website, I have to create a category for. So for this instance, I'd name the category, the name of the influencer. And then I would need to assign that category um, as a content page, which opened up six slots for us to use to input content to. Um, and Alistair mentioned this before, anything that was a slot or, or um, an asset in Salesforce was what he would put his HTML into. So before Ampliance, in the left-hand column, we have a, um, a combination of assets and Salesforce um, functionalities that we've put into the slots. And the Salesforce functionalities had to be in its own slot. It couldn't be mixed with any other content, otherwise it just wouldn't work. So the, the amazing thing that Alice was able to do was integrate the outfit builder functionality to an asset for us, um, that, to an Ampliance content type so we can put it in an asset meant that after having used um, dynamic content, you can see on the after column, we could put all of that information and content in one asset. We didn't have to split it up. It could all marry and work harmoniously together, Ampliance and Salesforce, it just all worked. So it meant that we could build pages a lot quicker because I wasn't filling around with adding different things in different slots. And you know, we, we, we don't have, the limitations now of page design because sometimes we'd have to be like, oh, the page can't look like this because you know the slots don't work that way. So now we've found certain ways to integrate the two. It's made our lives so much easier and we can publish things in one asset rather than having multiple and it all getting lost and confused. Um, so it's been a real, amazing journey and um, as Sweaty Betty grows as a business and how the demands of our business just will only increase and our markets expand um, and we dominate the world with our bomb sculpting leggings. It's reassuring that we have Ampliance as a partner and who are equally evolving with us. So they give us new and fun, exciting things to use and to help us increase our productivity and creativity. Um, so it's been a real great partnership and. I'm sure there's many more exciting things to come and we're always excited to see what the future holds for dynamic content. Thank you. Cool. So Pippa kind of touched on um, COVID and I think everyone in retail and e-commerce in particular is all of these things will be quite, um, quite familiar to you, but I'll just, 
briefly chat through how dynamic content has helped us during this time. Um, so on, I think it was late March, obviously the UK was put into a whole lockdown completely. I hate using the word because it's always in the news, but unprecedented. Um, and we didn't know what we, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know how long it would be for. And so everything was a bit up in the air. Um, and we, as a business, we needed to, we needed to, we needed to safeguard. Like I said, we didn't know if this was going to be a three week thing. We didn't know it was only six months. We didn't know it would be longer than that. Um, and so dynamic content, as Pippa was talking through, it has really enabled us to react to the, the, the changing landscape of the world. I mean, it was changing on a daily basis, as everyone knows. Um, it could be UK guidelines, it could be um, the, the lockdown guidelines, they could be changing. I think we obviously we're, we're very fortunate to be in the industry we are. Um, one of the only things we were allowed to do was exercise. So we were in the right area. But again, we didn't know how this was going to affect us. We we have our stores, but overnight. So our store business represented around about 60% of Sweaty Betty. Um, and overnight that went to 100% online and all eyes were on us as e-commerce. And so we needed to be reactive and we needed to react in order to safeguard the business. I think for me, completely sort of work side, work aside, it's really shown the camaraderie between us as a team. It's kind of brought us even closer considering we were all over, over Zoom screens for the entire six months or however long it's been. It has almost ironically brought us all closer together because we've all had to, we've all had to pull together to make these, um, to, to, to make sure that the business survives and not just survives, but thrives in this time as well. Um, and we've also kind of seen other parts of our website come into their own. Um, as I mentioned, the government guidelines were changing almost daily at one point. And so that would affect not just our customers, but it would affect our warehouses. So customers were affected in the ways that deliveries would be late or delayed, or um, they wouldn't be able to purchase certain things because of all the, all the, um, the restrictions that were put on, out, on everywhere, including our warehouses. So our hygiene pages, as I was talking through earlier, um, they became so much more important because our customer care team was getting overrun with questions and queries and complaints and things like that because they didn't know where the products were or parcels were. And so that meant that they were going to our hygiene pages and our informational pages a lot more. And that means that we had to be completely on the ball and reactive in order to fully um, make sure that customers were up to date and got all of the information they needed when they were shopping on our site. Um, and again, I mentioned earlier that there's a lot more to our stores than just clothes, uh, just clothes and leggings. That obviously we have our Wellness Wednesdays where these are talks from industry professionals and we also have workout classes. So obviously when stores closed, they weren't able to go ahead anymore. And we had to react with that. Our social teams worked very hard with a lot of influencers, a lot of industry um, people to create at-home content for our customers and we're putting it out online on our social channels but we wanted to house that on our website as well so that is where our community page kind of transformed we weren't we didn't really focus too much on that page um, pre-lockdown um, but having that has meant that we can have a have a consistent stream of that helpful material for our customers um, at the click of a at the click of a mouse so Alistair was able to quickly um, code a template for us within dynamic content. And like I said, that, that enabled us to update and have all of the content available that customers would want and need because health and well-being were such an important time of this um, during this COVID time. Um, so yeah, it, would, it enabled us to have that constant, constant stream of content for them. Um, so yeah, it was a challenging time. Um, as I said, it's it's not just we've survived, we have thrived during this time. 
And I think it's a testament to everyone that works at Sweaty Betty that it's just, it has meant that the business is in such a good place um, coming out, well, com hopefully coming out soon from this awful time that the, the world has seen. And so that leads us to the future and what, what does the future hold for Sweaty Betty and online content in particular. Um, so I think there's kind of four main areas that we're focusing on going forwards. Um, and dynamic content is really at the heart of that. So accessibility is one. Um, I'm sure this is, a, this is a, something that a lot of uh, e-commerce uh, professionals face. Um, a lot of our assets, we have to put copy onto images and therefore it's not live and it can't be read by screen readers, that kind of thing. And it's not great for people that may have some disabilities. So accept accessibility is really a big focus for us. We're trying to um, m maintain all of our content that we produce, um, well, as much as possible, will have live text. So they are readable for everybody, no matter who you are. Um, and that again is something dynamic content has made really easy um, with updated templates and with adding in copy functionalities into those templates. It means we don't have to rely on the back and forth between uh, designers. Um, if there's a typo or if there's um, a wrong pricing, for example, obviously we, we create a lot of regionalized content for various different markets around the world. Um, so it's very easy to do. Um, but with these templates in dynamic content has meant that we can quickly go into them, update the copy without having to get our designers and graphic designers to update anything their side. Um, and it really kind of takes out a huge chunk of that process. Um, you saw on Pippa's slide with the, the timeline, um, that amend stage and um, sign off stage really does, has been cut down with the use of dynamic content because of the ease and the flexibility that it gives us. Um, secondly, we are focusing on our site performance. Um, this is something Alistair is working very, very much on. And this is around site performance and site speed. Um, again, it is, we host all of our assets within Ampliance um, in the content hub and using this and using various new updates and various new um, templates we can main make sure that our site works to its best ability. And this can mean that all of our pages are a lot, a lot uh, lighter and therefore it gives customers a better, more seamless and enjoyable experience. Then thirdly, something we're heavily looking towards is personalization. Um, as Sweaty Betty grows, um, we are expanding very quickly and we're looking to enter different markets around the world. And so personalization, not just uh, in terms of region or where you are in the world, um, but in terms of what attributes a customer, customer might have and what group you belong to, or um, if you're logged in, a logged in experience versus a logged out experience or a guest experience. Um, I think nowadays customers are wanting almost a hyper-personalized version of a website whenever they go onto it. Um, I know I am, I know I expect when I use any website or any shopping experience that um, everything that I would want, it's, it's almost a case of being shown things that you don't, all, you don't, all, you, you don't know you need until you see them. Um, and that's what we're looking to with the help of dynamic content. Um, obviously we have such good functionalities to be able to regionalize by um, location and market in the world, but we want to take that a bit further and we want to be able to create multiple, even more multiple types of the same content for different customer groups and show them what they want and the most relevant things that they want at the most relevant times. Um, and updates with dynamic content can help us do that really quickly. Um, and again, gives us that flexibility to do so. And then I touched on it a little bit earlier, but we want to take our storytelling further. Um, we, as I said, in my example, we tested um, bringing our inspirational content into our more of our commercial journeys. But we want to try and see how that works when we go the other way. So taking our commercial aspects into our more educational pages. So this screenshot is a test that is running currently. Um, and we're testing our leggings guide and adding in more commercial aspects to this um, to see how customers react to it. Um, 
And again, dynamic content can help us do that. When we've completed this test, this can be then templated and then rolled out for other campaigns in the future. And it can give us a really, a really good base of what we want to do and how we do it and really reduce the time that it takes to create something like this. And that is a bit about our future. And that is the end of our, of our presentation. So thank you very much for listening. Thanks, Thank you very much. I mean, that was a great presentation. It, we talk a lot about these things, but I think it means an awful lot to actually come from our customers. <clears throat> and on a personal note, I mean, you know, thank you for being so collaborative. It's important that you have a great partnership to work on to make this happen um, and willing to make those changes. I suppose I've, I've got a quick question before maybe we dive into the other ones, Maddie, <laughs> is around, um, you ultimately have to change the way you work. So, you know, you had a developer kind of siloed with the content team and designers, you know, for anybody starting this journey, is there any kind of nuggets of information or, uh, you know, suggestions you would make to, to smooth, smoothen out that process, maybe? Or do you just need to dig in? <laughs> um, well, me and Alice still answer this question. Um, I'll, from my point of view, um, I think really walk through your site and see what templates that you really need and what what you what you think you can use over and over again and where you could use in multiple areas and think about how you could reuse those those templates and you know when you start off doing this we found it quite useful to have like team exercises where we would build stuff together and we'd all like almost make it a competition <laughs> and like me and Pete would be furiously building things like trying to do it, who could do it the fastest and really just like working together and ask ask each other questions and work with your your developer to understand it um because I know I was quite nervous having moved from um when we were on the old site using Ampliance then moving onto the, the new platform of Salesforce, having never used HTML ever in my life. I was so scared. I was like, oh my God, how long is this gonna take me to learn and understand? And then and then scrapping that and then moving on to the new Ampliance Dynamic content. And I was like, oh my God, how long is this gonna take me to learn? But really it didn't take us that long because we all just worked together and we plowed through. Um, and also, as I mentioned about integrating your current functionalities, like how can you integrate those into Ampliance templates to really make content building easy um, and spread out the ownership of the site between you all. Um, I think me and Pete particularly have certain areas which we really enjoy doing or we, we built initially and we kind of just look after those areas and we're the go-tos to update bits and bobs and it kind of goes unsaid like if the home page needs updating uh, that's me I do it I just do it automatically but say if I wasn't here Pete could easily pick up anything I was doing because it's all organized and that's another thing like I would say organize the hell out of Ampliance like dynamic content mm. anything you create really just have a system that works for you and your team so it's just easy to find stuff and navigate through um but yeah i think yeah. we've all got good and knowledge of all areas of ambulance so we're think, all good. um but yeah alistair what do you what do you well say? yes from a from a developer point of view um uh, further to what Pepper said i i i start with existing templates um that we already know work um and know that uh you know that they are going to be used over and over again and then i convert these uh, so convert the, I, I convert the HTML templates into handlebar templates uh, and create the JSON schemas and the content types from that. So from the developer point of view, that's how I found it easiest to do because I knew that they work and it was much easier to then create the content types. But as, uh, as well as that, make sure that you try and involve the people that are going to be using the content types. So Pippa and Pete because uh, you've got to make sure that the terminology that you're using and the wording makes sense to them because uh, there's so many word things you have to come up with like copy, bold, you know, line one, CTA one. You just have to think of what, 
does this make sense to anyone? Because <laughs> it might make sense to me, but not to them. So yeah. that's a big tip. Um, and just build lots, build lots of content types, but the ones that you build first aren't necessarily going to be the ones that you use long term. And you can always go back and optimize them. And that's something I'm currently doing now as well. I'm going back and optimizing some of my original ones. So, and also don't delete the webhooks. Which I may or may not have done. Accidentally. <laughs> Because that, that causes a, a lot of a lot of excitement. <laughs> Rock of Troy. Yeah. I've broken the internet a few times. <laughs> I think so so when I joined the business, uh, the the kind of the integration of ambience was already underway. It was kind of um about a month before was it that I joined that um ambience mm -hmm. went live. Um so from my perspective coming in a bit later, um I just reiterate the point think about and prioritize what you're going to reuse Troy was talking about how this is a headless experience and it all of the co the content can be used anywhere um so think how different templates different components would work all around your site because it will make life a hell of a lot easier than having to do kind of bespoke things each and every time great thanks for that Maddie have we got any questions we do, we have quite a few. We might not get a chance to cover them all, but we can go back individually um, to any that aren't covered. Um, so one question that I've tried to kind of summarize, um, a few are quite similar. So how um, is Sweaty Betty looking to incorporate, incorporate this online content from the site into other channels, um, for example, in-store, email, etc.? So Alison, do you want to touch on the email yeah. as your Currently so, working on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we are looking um, at integrating Ampliance with Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Uh, so we've been thinking about it uh, for a while, and then because of COVID nineteen and everything, suddenly our email output has become quite large. Uh, and I'm also, as well as doing the website, I also code every email that goes out from Sweaty Betty. So. We are looking at, at ways uh, that we can do this and one of them will be to do that because that will be great. We can create the templates and the email team can, can use these same templates that we're using on the website in their emails. So yes, we, we are definitely looking into that. Yeah, I think it, become, it becomes quite similar to the process that we do on the site, doesn't it? I mean, as Pippa was talking about and Alistair, it's the the process of getting something live is a lot more straightforward and a lot sort of um a bit more user friendly uh well a lot more user friendly and so we have for our blogs for example uh our copywriters can do that if they need to as well as us um directly in dynamic content so i think similarly um to take the to take the email load off alistair because it's just growing and growing and growing um yeah to to let the email teams be able to give them the the ability to do the t same type of thing we do it'll, it'll only be beneficial that's awesome thank god thanks guys i know we're a little bit over but i think we have time for one more um, there are quite a couple um so someone's put in how does amplience help with um kind of the pre-planning and being able to preview content ahead of time should i take that one um I mean, it's the, I think the beauty of being able to see it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a case of you're building as you're seeing what you're building. Um, I don't know if you remember from some of the screenshots that the guys were showing, but as you're building and dragging and dropping your different co content uh, types, you can literally see the page uh, being created before your eyes um, as you're building it. Um, and it kind of, I know Pippa and Alistair have both mentioned to me in the past that things were used to be having to be done in production and the live site. And so any mistake would be visible, not just to us, but to customers as well. So that could be anything from a typo, but that could mean um, another, a, another zero on a product. And that would mean that that would be a customer complaint and customer care would be having to deal with that. So being able to preview things just takes that uncertainty out of publishing um, and it, it kind of it's a, it's almost a safety net um, before we publish onto the site 
That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, we can go back to all the other questions as well individually, um, just conscious of timing. Don't want to keep everyone too long. Um, a big thank you to you guys for joining us today um, and a big thank you to all our attendees. Uh, we really hope you enjoyed the session um, and it will has been recorded and will be emailed to you all um, tomorrow as well. Um, so big thank you again for joining and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>